Bless the Lord. Good evening, everyone. For those joining us online, we greet you, we welcome you. And um, another evening of studying the word and prayer. How we call it? Prayer and studying the word. Amen. And we look forward to that each week as we spend time praying together and trusting God to um, work on our behalf and to instruct us to empower us and uh, give us that wisdom that we need in order to be effective. So we look forward to that and also, of course, fellowshipping with each other. Uh, we might have seen some of the faces on Sunday, but it is always good to see you again. Amen? Bless the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we are going to go into a session of prayer, but before I'd like to share a portion of scripture, a few scriptures with you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. It is so important to pray because prayer does so much. It is a very key part of our faith and um, how we get to communicate with God. It uh, helps us to um, hear from God where we develop the discipline to speak to God, but not just to speak to him, but to listen to him. So we anticipate hearing from him. It's just like we have daily communication. I say, you say, uh, while you're speaking, I'm listening. And while I'm speaking, you're listening. And that's how prayer is. And in the process of our communication, um, we also make requests at times. And sometimes it's just to share about ourselves and to um, allow the Lord to know where we are at and to seek his wisdom to guide us and to strengthen us. And so um, it is vital. It is vital. You know, we have so many different aspects of our lives and um, we place importance in some areas more than others. But to, I need us to understand that prayer is very, very important, a very important part of our lives. Hallelujah. It is like um, you have your meal and you have something to drink. If you're always eating solid without um, um, drinking any fluid, then you're going to be dehydrated eventually and find yourself in the hospital. Um, so... Uh, we cannot focus on just one area and not the other, but all the areas of our lives that will allow us to grow and grow effectively, we need to give keen attention to that. We seek God because we expect him to hear from us. The word of God says in Proverbs 15, verse 29, that the Lord is far from the wicked. The Lord is far from the wicked, uh, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. And I believe that we all have come to understand and we have accepted the, the truth that we are righteous. Amen? You're called righteous. I'm called righteous. Through Jesus Christ, we are righteous. And if you're righteous, it simply means that the Lord is near. Yes, he's near to you, near beside you. And that's why he hears when you pray. Because you're righteous. Now, you can imagine, some of us, we picture God um, way above the clouds, some far distant place. And that's our view of where God is. And because we see him so far off from us, our expectations of him is like, oh, we pray, but uh, this may take a really long time because God is so far away. Now, when you know and you... Deep in your heart, you know that God is everywhere at the same time because he's omnipresent. When you know and you have accepted that, you know that even if you whisper, he hears. And he is so powerful that even if you think, he, 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 he sees, he knows your thoughts. Amen? And um, that's the God we serve. So he is not into some distant or on some distant galaxy somewhere. No, he's right here. And more so, he dwells inside of us. Glory to God. And because of that, he, he, he knows us. He knows 
um, our strengths and he knows our weaknesses. He knows how sometimes we miss um, what we should be praying about. And sometimes we give more focus on the things that we should not be giving too much focus to. He knows that. And that's why he allows his spirit to dwell inside of us. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Let us look at what this has to say to us. Romans 8, 26 through 27. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Romans 8, 26 and following. So likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. So it simply means there's a way we should pray. There are some things we should pray about. But um, in our weaknesses and our limitations, sometimes we don't recognize those things to pray about. And so the Spirit of God makes himself, or he makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So even when we uh, fall short in praying about the things we should pray about, the Spirit of God, recognizing our weaknesses, he comes and he prays those things through. Hallelujah. So we have that help. That's why he's called the comforter. He's called, you know, that he's our help. And so we can, we can rely on him. We can trust him to help us in our infirmities. So where we fall short, the spirit of God is there to uphold us. The things we fail to pray about, the Spirit of God is praying about those things with, with groanings, deep intercession for us, uh, things that cannot be uttered. He, he knows everything. He knows everything. God knows your past, he knows your present, and he knows your future. And that's why we can trust him, because he knows your tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we're going to pray. We're going to take a moment and we're going to pray. We're going to pray for ourselves that we will um, you know, know the will of God. We're going to pray that we will yield to the Spirit of God so that uh, we can understand that He is for us. We can understand that He is there and He's making things, all things complete for us. Amen. And that's why we are going to seek his face. Because we need to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. We need to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Um, we are not just physical beings, but we are spiritual beings. And because we are spiritual beings, our spirit man must be alive unto Christ. Alive unto God. So that we can hear when he is speaking to us. Amen? Blessed be the name of the Lord. So let us not as we, going, we go through a moment of prayer. Hallelujah. And what it is, you may not be able to utter aloud for me, utter aloud for me to hear and understand. That's okay. And you may want to pray some things privately, privately, but that's okay. The Holy Spirit will hear you. You'll find your corner and you'll pray. But understand that in all weaknesses, the Spirit of God is there for us. He is there for us. And that's why we are going to seek his face. Amen. So take a moment and pray for yourself. Pray asking God uh, to open up your understanding, uh, to open up your ability to discern his plans for your life. Hallelujah. And through the Holy Spirit, he will do just that. And um, thanking him for continuing to cover us and to pray things through that we fail to pray about. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Father, we bless you. We bless you, Lord God. We bless you. We bless your holy name. We worship you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. The Lord, we thank you that you hear us. We thank you, Lord God, that you understand us. We thank you, Lord God, that you're there for us. That even, Lord God, in our weaknesses, Lord God, you're there to strengthen us. 
you, 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 your, your strength, oh God, hallelujah, is made perfect in us, in our weaknesses. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you hear us. And that's why we are calling upon you now, Lord God. Thanking you, Lord God, hallelujah, for being faithful. And that you're always there, Lord God, to answer us. So we ask of you, Lord God, that you will, hallelujah, strengthen us. Strengthen us, O oh God, individually. Strengthen me, Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. That I will, O oh God, walk in your wisdom and walk in understanding, Lord God. And I, Lord God, will obey you. Help me to discern what is right and what is wrong, Lord God. That your spirit will, my spirit will be alive unto your spirit, Lord God. Alive to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Alive to understand what the Spirit is saying and where he's leading me, that my eyes, my spiritual eyes will be open to walk in the path that the Holy Spirit is leading in the name of Jesus, Lord. We need you, Lord God. We need you to lead us. We need you to guide us, Lord God. We need you to help us, Lord God. And so, Father, we come to you and we are saying, Lord God, we need you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We need you to sustain us day by day. We need, Lord God, your wisdom so we can apply wisdom appropriately, Lord God. God. Hallelujah to all our situation. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for strengthening us. We thank you that as we pray, Lord God, you're answering us, Lord God. We thank you for preserving us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Over the years, Lord God, when we stumble, Lord God, when I stumble, Lord God, you picked me up, Lord God. You, kept, you caught my fall, Lord God. Hallelujah. And prevented me, Lord God, from falling to total destruction but lord god you 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 continue to uphold me lord god with your grace with your mighty hand you continue to preserve me for that lord god i praise you lord god but it also helps me to understand lord god my own weaknesses lord god and that i cannot trust in myself lord god but i can trust in you lord god because your strength is made perfect lord god in my weaknesses oh god your strength is made perfect perfect in the lives of my brothers and my sisters, Lord God. That's why we seek you, Lord God. That's why we fellowship, Lord God. Because, Lord, you help us. You, you bind us together in unity, Lord God. We praise your name and we worship you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that you are our strength, Lord God. We thank you that you are the strength of our lives, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that we are overcomers because you have made us overcomers, Lord God. And we overcome in you, Lord God. So we abide in you, Lord God, hallelujah. And with us abiding in you, Lord God, you empower us, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You help us to look beyond our own weaknesses and look to you, our strength. That's why David said, I will lift my eyes to the hills. From whence come my help? My help comes from whom? The Lord. Hallelujah. You, the Lord, our Lord, the one who has made heaven and earth, but not just making them, but Lord God, you continue to preserve. Hallelujah. You continue to sustain the earth, oh God, for us. And sometimes when people are fearful of what might happen Lord God you help us to rest assured that it is in your hand that we stand it is in your hand that we exist it is in your hand Lord God and you uphold us with your mighty hand glory to your name glory to your name Glory to your name. You uphold us with your mighty hand, Lord. Hallelujah. And no one can snatch us out of your hand, Lord God. Hallelujah. So in your hands, we are secure. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We are secure in your hands, Lord God. We are preserved in your hand, Lord God Almighty. We are protected in your hand, Lord God. And for that reason, Lord God, we place everything into your hand, Lord God. God, our today, our tomorrow, hallelujah, our eternal future, Lord God, we place our lives in your hand and we say, Lord, have your own way in our lives. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless you, Lord God, because you're good to us. We bless you, Lord God, because you're kind to us. 
We bless you, Lord God, because you're faithful, Lord God. And you continue to keep your word. Hallelujah. The word you have sent, Lord God, to heal our diseases, Lord God. You continue to keep your word, your promises, Lord God. You continue to fulfill in our lives. And so, Lord God, we just need to yield ourselves to you and trust you and to watch you work in our lives. I pray that we will not be weary, Lord God. We will not allow ourselves, Lord God, hallelujah, to question our Oh God, your goodness, to question your faithfulness. But I pray, oh God, that our eyes will be open to see that you're working on our behalf constantly, constantly, continuously, Lord God. You're working on our behalf. For that, Lord, we praise you and we lift you up and we exalt you because you preserve us. Hallelujah. We exalt you, Lord God, because you protect us. We exalt you, Lord God, because you provide for us. We exalt you, Lord God, because you defend us. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 How amazing you are, Lord God. You're truly amazing. The songwriter said, God is truly amazing, Lord God. You are amazing, God. Hallelujah. You are wonderful. Hallelujah. You're faithful. Hallelujah. You're magnificent, Lord God. We praise you. Wonderful, magnificent God. We praise you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. You deserve to be praised from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same sun. Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. And we thank you that you answer our prayers. We thank you, Lord God, that you answer our prayers. We thank you that you're there for us, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, we will not stray from you. We will not turn our back on you, Lord God. But we will face you, Lord God. We will move toward you, Lord God. We will seek to dwell in, 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 in your grace, Lord God. We will seek to find you and to abide in you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we will not... Focus on our um, deficiencies, Lord God. We will not focus on our weaknesses, Lord God. We will focus on your strength. We will focus on your strength. We will focus on the reality that our strength is in you, Lord God. Our hope is in you, Lord God. Oh, we bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. He is amazing. He's amazing. You may be seated for a few minutes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as believers, we have to care so much about each other. You have to be mindful. You need to be mindful. I need to be mindful. We all need to be mindful when it comes to thinking about our brothers and sisters in the faith. And that's why we are there to encourage each other. You know, when you, where you are strong, you know, I can lean on your strength as you support and encourage me. And where I'm stronger, I can do the same for you. But we need each other. You know, I was just reflecting the other day that um, some of us, we are already so cocky and proud you know, that we, if we were able to do everything, you know, the, but God has designed us in such a way that we have to depend on different parts of our body to function effectively. You know, um, uh, we feel so handicapped when just one of our fingers um, is acting up. We feel, I mean, one of our toes might just experience a slight sprain and we feel almost incapacitated as if we are not able to do anything else. And um, of course, um, there are times too when other areas of our physical body are not able to function, but other areas are functioning. So say for instance, I would be able to open my mouth and speak to you and you understand exactly what I'm saying. 
But if something should happen to my brain and I'm not able to communicate, but I'm still able to use my hand, I can write what I want to say. You, you get what I'm saying? So I cannot say, I don't need my hand, because the day may come when my mouth is not, and my tongue is not able to move to, uh, to speak words, you know, but my hands might be able to do all of that. You get what I'm saying? So God has designed us in such a way that we, we are a body. If I were only an eye, if I were only an eye, <laughs> And, um, and um, with my eyes, I would be able to do everything. You know, then I would be able to say, oh, I don't need that. I don't need hands. I don't need feet. I don't need that. I don't need that. But sometimes we behave like that as believers. We think that although we are only an eye when it comes to being a part of the body, we don't need the hands. We don't need the feet. We don't need, we almost don't, we sometimes don't even need the brain where the eyes should be. We, we, we just don't see the need for each other. We feel as if we are self-sufficient. And God is saying, you are not. We need each other. You need me and I need you. We need each other in the body of Christ. You know, so if, the body was just an eye, what would happen? You'd just be seeing. Just that. You know? Come on. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be, if I come across somebody who's just an eye, I would be gone. You know? But we, we have to understand how important it is when it comes to uniting together as one in the body of Christ. So you value the different giftings, value the different abilities. Is that we have to value each other. You know, I, I could be driving a car, and because you're in the car, you're able to see some things that my blind spot would prevent me from seeing. And so I'm making a turn, and I, because of the blind spot, I'm not able to see the individual, and you're able to say, stop! That's, and so we need each other in the body of Christ. Amen? So let us just look at this portion of scripture. It said, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Oh, this speaks of such great humility here. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence. Um, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. This is so wonderful. And this is from Romans 12, 10 through 12. You can write that down, Romans 12, 10 through 12, and you can look at it. But it is telling us to be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Um, sometimes, based upon our family background, we don't know what brotherly love is because if you're from a family where everybody was just cantankerous and they're always fighting and so on, you might not know personally what bro true brotherly love is if you're from that kind of, you know, family that is always fighting. But although you might not know it personally, there are times when you can see it in others. And that's why we say, oh, I wish my family was like yours. So you really don't always have to experience the, 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 the reality of uh, our, um, brotherly love when it comes to in your family to understand that, look, the, it, it can be on display and you can learn. You know, we desire, without experiencing some things, we desire them because we see how they manifest, how they work. And so it is important that the text is telling us that we should um, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence. So we must remain diligent. We must be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. 
And it says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Rejoicing in hope. You know, just to know that we have that blessed hope. Um, we are not depressed because what? We are able to look ahead and see greater. People who are hopeless, they only see the worst in the future. But we are hopeful. We are not hopeless. And because we are hopeful, we can look ahead and expect great things to happen. Even when the things currently in our world, in our situation, um, are, are, are just bad, we remain hopeful because God has allowed us to see better beyond what we see now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we, we can rejoice in hope. We can be patient in tribulation. You know, it's because you know of what is about to, uh, what is about to happen in that God will allow his, his Holy Spirit to give you a glimpse of what is about to happen. And what that does for you, it gives you hope that you can be patient in your tribulation and not give up. So we remain patient in tribulation. Why? Because of our hope. And he says, continuing steadfastly in prayer. We will always need the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. We will always need the wisdom of God. So let us stand as we pray for each other. You know, pray for our brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, as, as I said before, you know, uh, uh, the body, we need each other. We need each member of our body to function effectively. And so we are praying and praying for our brothers and sisters, those with special giftings and, and talents too. Hallelujah. Those who are able to encourage and to support. We pray for, we pray that we will function the way God wants us to function. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the unity in the body. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have uh, designed us in such a way, Lord God, that when the, 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 the body of Christ is spoken of, just as how we need our hands, we need our feet, we need our eyes, we need our um, tongue, we need, we, we need our feet, we need the heart, we need the brain, we need the different members of our bodies to be effective, Lord God, where we are not suffering from any dysfunction, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. That here we are as, a, as the body of Christ, representing the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we value each other. We thank you, Lord God, that we care about each other. We thank you, Lord God, that we seek to esteem each other and not to pull down each other. Lord, we thank you that we are not devaluing anyone around us, Lord God. But we are saying, Lord God, each is important. We can say, you're my brother, you're my sister. Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have equipped us, Lord God. You have equipped us as a body with spiritual gifts, Lord God. Hallelujah. With the ministry of support, Lord God, we can encourage each other. We can discern. You can give us, Lord God, the ability, Lord God, hallelujah, to have that word of knowledge that somebody who is in need of that word, Lord God, oh God, and you can reveal to us situations, uh, uh, areas in which our brothers and sisters need help or encouragement, Lord God. So you have allowed the body to be able to discern, Lord God. You have allowed us, Lord God, hallelujah, to be able to care. You have allowed us, Lord God, to be able to intercede for each other as you reveal things to us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. So I pray, Lord God, that my brothers will be strengthened, that my sisters will be strengthened in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that we will care Care, care enough, Lord God, to love. Care enough, Lord God, to strengthen and to support. Care enough to be there, Lord God. And not to see ourselves more important than the other. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that you, you are helping us to see how much we need each other, Lord God. And so, Father God, hallelujah, may we reflect the true body of Christ. Where we are complete, Lord God. We are complete, Lord God. We are humble before you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We are kind and we are diligent, Lord God. Hallelujah. In being there for each other. Help us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Not to be weak. Not to be weary, Lord God. But that we'll be steadfast. And that we'll be patient even in our trying times. 
instead of giving up, Lord God, we will remember that our hope is in you. We praise you. Hallelujah. And we lift you up. Just take a moment and give God thanks. Hallelujah. Thanks for his goodness. Thanks for preserving us. Hallelujah. For keeping us and for making us one. Jesus prayed that we would be one. Hallelujah. Even as he and the Father are one. We bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Receive Pastor Dean. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you. Your Father, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the privilege of prayer. Most people don't realize it's a wonderful thing to be able to talk to God. <laughs> it is a wonderful thing to be able to speak with God. And it's also a wonderful thing to speak with a living God who, uh, who also speaks. Amen? And so um, not only do we open our mouths to um, express our desires, our praise, our worship to him, but we also get the privilege of having him respond to us. Our God hears and answers prayer. Amen? When the prophet was on the mountain dealing with the, um, you know, the, the prophets of Baal, um, he actually began to mock them for a while and say, you know, scream a little louder, he might be sleeping, you know. Keep scream, shouting out, he might be distracted. But our God is never distracted. Amen? He's never deaf to our words. Glory to God. And even when we miss it, he recognizes it and teaches us so we don't have to keep missing it. Because our God is committed to us not only hearing, not just hearing our prayer, but also to answering our prayers. Amen? A number of years ago, the Lord said to me, Prayer must be targeted with a goal of achieving something specific. Hallelujah. We must know what we're praying for and why. Amen? Let me say it again. We must know what we're praying for and why. Even when we're praying in tongues, you know, again, we may not know the exact words, but we, 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 um, we're praying. But many times when I'm praying in the Spirit and I'm praying about something, I'll say to the Lord, I said, I'm so grateful that you've given us the Holy Spirit to help us in our time of prayer. And so I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to help me to pray this thing out. Amen? And then I go to praying in the Spirit, knowing I'm praying about that particular thing. Hallelujah. But prayer is a privilege. Amen? And we must always pray with expectancy. We must always pray believing God. Amen? And so we thank God. All right. I trust you have your Bibles tonight. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and we're so thankful for your presence. We celebrate your goodness. We glorify your name, we honor your name, and we thank you for the fact that we are your children and you are our Father. Yes. And we're so thankful for the fact that you have given us your word so that your will is revealed to us. You have given us your Holy Spirit. He is our teacher, he is our guide, and so much more. And we continue to trust him to unveil, to unfold, to reveal the word unto our spirits. We are believing for deposits of grace and for impartations of truth so that when we leave from here, we'll be able to say it was good that we came. And I thank you once again for the anointing that you've placed on my life and for making my tongue as the pen of a ready writer. In Jesus' name, amen. Is there kind of a reverb or something? I don't know if that's the right word for it because I keep hearing something. Um, you know, um, I, like, I like my voice to sound like me. <laughs> uh, you know, I know that they what they do. So if I need to switch to this mic, I will, but I prefer not to. All right. Um, before I go into um, sharing 
what I want to share. I, um, I, I want to say this to you. I noticed that looking at some things that some ministers um, post, I notice sometimes there's some that, you know, puts this emphasis on, on the words of Jesus. Um, and nothing is wrong with that in itself, but almost as if to say that, um, you know, Jesus said it and that's more important than anything else. You know? And I want to teach you something. The words of God through the Apostle Paul are no less the word of God than the word of God through Jesus when he walked the earth. And the words of Christ, as much as he's Christ, is no more the word of God, okay, than anything else, any other man of God who is recorded in Scripture. We're not talking about anybody else now. We're talking about the authors of Scripture that gave to us that God said. Don't allow yourself to minimize any biblical truth because Jesus said it, now Jesus didn't say it himself, okay? Paul wrote by inspiration of the Spirit. So, you know, so did others, all right? And, and so don't allow yourself to get caught up in that, okay? Because I think it's a big mistake. It's an absolutely big mistake. You know, um, you know, following the example of Jesus is paramount. But Paul also said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen? And, and so, you know, Paul was confident how he was living his life. Come on now. Amen? And he was so confident that when he came to the time of giving up the ghost, he said, listen, I fought a good fight. I finished the course. I have kept the faith. Amen? So when you open your Bibles and the Lord is speaking, you know, through John or he's speaking through James or he's speaking, you know, through, you know, through, through Paul or somebody else, God speaking is as valid as, if, as, as when God spoke through Christ. Amen? Jesus said, I say what I hear the Father say. Amen? And again, those men were saying what they heard the Father say. Praise the Lord. I'll just throw this in too. If we are convinced that the Bible is the word of God, then we must also be convinced of this, that the compilation of this book had to be protected by God himself. Amen? I, I, God didn't leave it up to men to decide which 66 books came in here. Paul makes reference to a third letter that he wrote to the church at Corinth. But it's not in here. Amen? And there must be a reason why God just chose the ones that are in here. So be very careful about trying so hard to find out what others supposedly wrote. I get, you know, because for, for one thing, I tell people, if you have not even mastered what's in the 66 books, why you need 67, 68, 69, and, and number 92? You, you, you get the point? You haven't even mastered what's in the 66, and you want more? Just, just the thought. And then here's the danger. When you go outside of this, then you run the risk of now holding on to things that God never gave. For example, if, if we're going to go like that, then we might as well just bring in the Book of Mormon in here. Because it's another, supposed to be another testament of Jesus Christ. Amen? Third thing, since I'm on this, I might as well. I already started getting myself in trouble on Sunday. Here's a third thought. Stop trying to accept organizations and groups that are not biblically correct just because they use the term Christian or God, the word God. Amen? I don't mind telling you, Mormons need Jesus. They need to be saved. Amen? Amen? And sometimes I look at the way people talk, you would think that, you know, just because they say, you know, come on, folks. You know, I'm not saying that with any hate, any kind of, you know, um, discrimination. Just truth. Because see, when you accept a group as being orthodox, biblically correct, when they are not, then you will allow them to teach you their falsehood, and you will accept it as truth. 
Amen? Glory to God. All right. The other thing is, tonight we're going to talk about, you know, plan to be a witness. Plan to be a witness. Over the last couple um, weeks, about two weeks or so, the Lord has been um, pointing out to me that the foundation for 2023, the year to come, is in the things that he has shown me during the course of 2022. And part of what I need to do is to go back and look at those things so that I can begin to get a picture of what needs to go, to go, to go forward. When I started writing down certain things in the beginning of the year, I, I um, you know, um, you know, I, I didn't realize how God would use it as a, as a pat, the patterns for me. And, and so the reason we're talking about plan to be a witness tonight is because of something um, the Lord, you know, gave me back on June the 21st. I, I believe I shared some of it with you. I won't go into all the details, but I'll say this. The Lord, I had a dream, very, very distinct dream. And then as I was writing down the dream, the Lord, be, and there was no instruction. In, I just saw everything go through. But as I was writing down the dream, the Lord began to show me the lessons in the dream. Okay? And the first lesson was know where you are and where you are taking the people, the congregation. Now, I don't know, I don't remember to what degree I am. Um, I share this with you, but I remember actually uh, in one Sunday when I was ministering at our congregation in Kingston, uh, I actually, the, the whole teaching was coming out of the, the, these things, this particular dream. Know where you are and where you are taking the people. Now, please understand that that, that was a word from God to me. Know where you are as pastor and where you're taking the people. Amen? All right? Secondly was have a plan or create a path to get to the destination. Have a plan or create a path to get to the destination. In other words, okay, now you know where you're wanting to go. The next step is, okay, how are you going to get there? Have a plan. And this will apply to your life beyond church. Okay? Have a plan. Have a plan. Have a plan. How are you going to get there? Have a plan. Have a plan. How are you going to get there? How are you going to get there? Thirdly, make adjustments as needed to make your way to the destination. Make adjustments as needed to make your way to the destination. In other words, none of us are going to put together a perfect plan day one. Because revelations unfold. Unforeseen things show up. Amen? They may not surprise God, but they surprise us. Okay? But we also have to learn how to make adjustments. We have to learn how to make adjustments. In other words, some, you know, you, 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 you are certain this was 100% the right way to go, but now you're realizing, oh, no, I need to tweak this a little bit. Amen? You've got to make some changes where necessary. And, and so that is important. The fourth thing he showed me was that the path will become clearer and clearer as I'm moving towards the destination. The path will become clearer and clearer as I'm moving towards the destination. It's amazing what experience does. I mean, it's amazing how as you're moving along, you just have more understanding. So because you have more understanding, it's easier to even make the path ahead of you um, you know, more easy to follow. Very, very interesting. Okay, very, very interesting. Um, you know, it's, uh, how would I say this? Even, 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 even while um, traveling sometimes, you'll, you'll experience that. You know, as you, as, you, as, you're, as you go along, you get a little bit more confident from, from when you, you know, first left. You know, you get along the way and you begin to see progress. And obviously you get a little more confident. And because you're more confident, you, t you tend to have a little bit more clarity. Okay? But the, the, if, if there is a favorite part of this whole thing, was the last thing he said to me that, that morning. 
and showed me that morning from the dream. And it's this, that, which is the fifth thing, all right, was weaponize the plan with the power of the Holy Spirit. Whatever plan you're making, whatever plan we're making as a church, I'm making as a leader, all right, weaponize the plan with the power of the Holy Spirit, understanding that it cannot be fulfilled by human strength only. Because everything that God has assigned us is greater than our wisdom and our natural understanding. Everything. 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 Glory to God. Everything is greater than our natural understanding. It's greater than our wisdom. It's greater than our natural resources. So we need the faith of God. We need the wisdom of God. We need the guidance of God. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to help us in the things that we are setting out to do as a church. Now, we cannot set out to do anything as a church and, and have it separated, okay, from, um, separated from our individual responsibilities. It's not possible, okay? So what happens is this, that as, um, as God begins to, un to reveal things from a, a, a leadership context, the next level is for you and I, or let me say you in a specific sense, because let's, let's see me as the one that God has given the plan through, okay? As a, on an individual level, you have to now to see your place in that plan, okay? What, what's my place in that, Lord? And then you apply all these, these, these principles. See, you may, you, may not be a, you may not be involved in everything, but you're part of the process that causes everything to come to pass. For example, you know, there are things, for example, that I, um, that I want to talk about from a pastoral context, even some more admonitions I'd like to give. The challenge sometimes is that um, you want to make sure that when you do it, you, 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 you do it right, and secondly, you also want to make sure that, that, that you, you, you try to do it in a way that people will accept it. Because sometimes pastoral admonitions um, are not comfortable. They're, they're not comfortable to, to, to say, neither are they comfortable to receive. You know, you know pe people, um, people don't realize that Truth is not always comfortable when you first hear it. It's not always comfortable when you first hear it. And, and so what happens is that because of emotions, people reject things that will catapult them to greater levels because of their initial responses. And then, and then here's the other thing. People have a tendency to not pay attention to your heart, but their thoughts of your heart. Okay? So then what happens then, they don't hear what you say. They hear what their offense tells them you said. <laughs> but what their offense said you said is not what you said. Okay? It's not what you said. Okay? And, and, and so what happens, they, they, miss, they, they miss out. And then it becomes harder for God to help them. Okay? Now, if you open your Bibles to Acts chapter, open your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, before I get there, one of the things that the Lord said to me recently, okay, which was, you know, back in September on the 23rd, was related to the growth of the church. Related to the growth of the church. So, therefore then, regardless of how 2022, this current year, may have played out, okay, in everything I want to do, God's plan that we have been trying to implement as relates to Evangelism and soul winning and, and growing the church through winning people to Christ is very much in place from the context of that, that's, that's what he wants done. He wants the church to grow. 
And I have a responsibility in that. Amen? And, and so in some aspects of this, you know, I have to now get the clarity and the wisdom of God. Okay? You know, how do I, for example, how do I spend time at home impacting the congregation effectively for this to happen while at the same time nurturing the other two congregations that both are asking for my presence? You understand where I'm coming from? Okay? How do I do that? So I'm asking God for wisdom and seeking answers. Okay? You know, and, and one thing I'm looking at is how to use technology, for example, outside the realm of Zoom. Zoom is limiting. Most people don't know that. Zoom is very limiting. Okay? Um, and, and in, in a way that, that broadens, that, that broadens impact. For me, how do I say it? For me, this is my strongest comfort zone. By that I mean, when I'm standing before a congregation teaching, it's a natural flow for me. It's, you know, as opposed to when you're just sitting down, you know, um, when I'm just sitting down, you know, talking to a screen. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I connect well when I have people in my presence. There's a, something about that for me. Not that I can't teach effectively otherwise, but there's some, this, this, I, I just know this is, this is my thing. Amen? And so forth. And um, so, so how, to, how to do that, how to impact, you know, how to help, you know, all, every aspect of Christ alive to, to step to greater heights and greater levels. Glory to God. Very, very important. So those things have been playing on my heart. So in Acts chapter 2, and I've been, and by the way, let me say, and I've been going over some of the things that I've taught about witnessing, and this is one of them. Acts chapter 2, starting at verse number um, 17. Acts chapter 2, starting at verse number 17. I wish the Lord would do one of those, um, something supernatural for me. I wish he would take... You know, a couple of my Bibles will have little notes here and little notes there and just supernaturally merge them into one Bible. <laughs> because sometimes as I will open up, a path, you know, in, in, like in this Bible, I begin to remember some things I wrote down in my devotional Bible. You know what I mean? And it's, oh man, I wish I had those right in front of me right now. But, but starting at verse 17, and we're going to read to verse 21. It says here, and it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I'll pour out of my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants, men servants, and on my maid servants, I'll pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Now, um, you know, think, think about this for a minute. The scripture says, you know, we live in a time where people are, are debating issues about women in ministry and stuff like that, all right? But what God says in verse 18, and on my men servants, right, first of all, it starts in verse 17, sons and daughters shall prophesy. So how, you proph how does a woman prophesy if, she speak, if she's supposed to keep silent, like some people are preaching? There's a difference between the word silent, meaning don't say a word, and silence, which is a term Paul used. Okay? Then he says, verse 18, and on my men servant and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. The they there speaks about both male and female. Okay? And prophecy, in its simplest definition from Scripture, is speaking unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. And that can happen both from the context of one to one ministry. Or group teaching. Amen? We have examples in the New Testament of Paul giving admonition to husband and wife in their teaching ministry. All right? Verse 19, And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. We need to reset that clock. You probably started it for the prayer, but you didn't restart it for my teaching time. Amen? 
The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. So right there as he's speaking to us about this issue of, um, of, of you know, you know men serve, maid servants, sons and daughters prophesying, he ends this particular discourse or quotation of scripture dealing with the fact that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Shall be what? Saved. Shall be what? Saved. So therefore then, you know, all of this outpouring, all of this empowerment by the Spirit is designed to bring people to salvation. Amen? That means both male and female, we all have the responsibility to be sharing Christ. And ladies, let me say this to you. The worst thing you can get in trouble with God for is for preaching to somebody and getting them saved. I mean, I can just see God being upset at you for that. Amen? Leave these people with their foolish debates alone and just go tell people what Jesus told you to tell them from the word. Amen? So, so, so we are living out the prophetic words of Joel because that's who was being quoted in Acts 2. We're living in the season of the fulfillment of the prophetic words of Joel. So we are supposed to be winning people to Jesus. Glory to God. I, I have a, a prayer um, that I lifted up to God the other day. Okay, I was standing by the church door speaking to, um, to a, um, a lady that I know that had passed by to pick up something that I had for her. And when the young lady was coming up the street, Others had passed us standing there. This young lady was coming up the street. And I just knew in my spirit there was going to be a conversation about the church with her. And as she came, she said, um, she said, what, what kind of, what's, what's this building? I said, it's a church. Oh, it's a church. What kind of church? Okay. And I started telling her and so forth. And, um, you know, and, and we had a conversation. She said, she said, I remember my friend taking me to church in Christ Alive up someplace. I said, yeah, we used to be up the street there. Amen. And, um, she, you know, she's she, um, Jamaican. She came here when she was quite young. I think she said seven. Okay. And so, you know, you know, spoke with her a little bit, gave her an invitation to the service, gave her um, the card, invite card and so forth, and, you know, you know invited her to, to drop in. And then I assured her, I said, just so you know, I, I just knew to tell her this. I said, just so you know, when it says we start at 930, we do start at 930. I know you'll assume because, you know, I'm Jamaican, you know, Jamaican, I'm Jamaican like yourself. That may mean, I say, yeah, you know, that's true. A lot of times, when, you know, especially West Indian Jamaican church, when they said it's starting at 9, nine o'clock, they're starting at 9.30, 9.45. I said, my personal belief is that if I advertise 9.30 and I'm starting 45 minutes late, I lied. If I'm starting 10 minutes late, I lied. Amen? Start on time. Amen? And, and so she said, well, she said, you know, many, many weekends or most weekends, I'm out on Long Island. I said, well, you know, I, I, I act like she didn't say it. And I said to her, I said, drop in and bring some friends with you. She's not too long ago moved into the community. Amen? And she gave me her name. And as soon as I walked away, I just began to lift her name up to God. And I said, Lord, bring her in, in the name of Jesus. Give her a reason not to go to Long Island. Come on to church. Praise God. But every opportunity, every single opportunity, no matter what it is, let's use it. For those who have been exposed to the gospel, those who have not been exposed to the gospel, we are living in that time prophesied by Joel. So you need, as much as we need a corporate plan in reaching the lost, you need your own individual plan. Plan to be a witness. Plan to be a witness. Glory to God. Go to Matthew 24 now. Matthew 24. See, I pay attention to where it's happening in the body of Christ. And I do so for the purpose of encouragement. We're going to pick up verse number four. I do so for the purpose of encouragement. What do you mean? In other words, if God can do it someplace else, he surely can do it here. Bishop David Oyelepo speaks about the fact that he, he hungered 
for what was on Yonggi Cho in, 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 in South Korea. Who at that time, he's in heaven today, but I don't know if he still has, but, probably, but that church probably still the largest church in the world. I don't know anymore. But, but the point of the matter is, you know, he, he, that church had mastered church growth. And he said he wanted what he had. He wanted, you know, what, what, what Kenneth Hagin had. He wanted what Kenneth Copeland had, you know. And he, he talked about others. He wanted what they had, okay. And he yearned for it, and he went after it until he got it. And the thing about it is that my attitude is I look at David Oyedipo the way he looked at Young Cho. You understand what I'm saying? Folks, we are in a metropolis. Okay? Yesterday, I had a very interesting conversation. After... Um, after being at a fellowship for uh, the ministry or association I'm ordained with, we were dismissed. People had gone. And this, this couple from Ghana engaged me in conversation. We had met before. He didn't remember, but his wife remembered that we'd met. And we're just talking. And then we end up talking with just one or two others that were there. And the others that were there actually belonged to the host church. I was the only guest left. But I know the people well, so we're just talking. And this um, gentleman, who I have known um, at, this, at this church, as long as I've been affiliated with this church, he has been there. For the first time, I heard his testimony how he ended up there. He is living in, in, in New Jersey, a, a good distance from this church is in New York. And... He is um, dating and courting this young lady that um, lives at the no in another part of New Jersey. And, um, you know, so, so, and then she says, um, I, you know, I want you, you know, I want you to take you to church with me on Wednesday night. I said, Wednesday night? You know, they have church on Wednesday night. I said, yeah. I said, you know, you know so he, he had to get her and then they're driving. And so he said he thought, they were just going to a church someplace in the community. And they kept driving. He said, where are we going? He said, oh, I just keep going where I tell you. And he's driving, driving. Next thing he knows, he's left New Jersey, and he's in the state of New York. And he's trying to figure out, where am I going? Which church am I going to on this Wednesday night? He said, don't worry about it. And so they ended up at, at um, the church in line with RLCC. They ended up there. And he was like, and he saw these cars here, and he was like, you know, and, and when he said, when he heard the name of the preachers, Otterbach, that's German, he thought to himself, I am going in the middle of the week to a church. And, of course, he assumed that they were Caucasians. I thought the same thing when I first heard their names, too. Okay? And so he said, when he got there and he, 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 when he got in the lobby, he saw a picture of them. And he realized, okay, these are people of color like himself. And he, you know, and he said, but they have German names. So he was still, you know, and he said, if this, if this is, if this is, you know, boring, uh, I'm leaving. So he was prepared to leave before he even got inside. But he said, when he got inside, it was another experience because now the ushers greeted him because I spoke about my first experience. And my first, first experience visiting the church, I, I was brought, being led by the usher. And next thing I know, I'm brought all the way down to front row. And you know, when you're in the front row looking up at the preacher, if you want to run out, you can't so easily. So he said, next thing you know, he's being brought down, brought down. He said the usher wouldn't stop, and he ended up on the front row. So that God set him up. But he said what fascinated him was, this was Wednesday night, and there were about 700 people in this building on a Wednesday night. And he's like, all these people on the Wednesday night. So then the service began. And he said, the teaching started, and it grabbed his attention. He said, and he spoke about his, his experience in church, where he went to church and all that, but he said, I could understand this teaching. So he said, interestingly, he, 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 he learned so much that the next week he came back. He came back. And then he said to a couple of his friends, four of his friends, 
hey, I'm going to bring, you got to come to church with me on Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Said, Don't worry about it, just come. And they were surprised because when they got there and saw all those hundreds of people, they were absolutely surprised. And the end result is he's been in this church all these years. All right? All these years. But it started with one person saying to him, come to church with me. And then he brought others. Who then brought others? If you know people that are hungry for the word, bring them where the grass is green, where the word is being taught. Amen? And leave the rest to God. But the same is true when it comes to reaching those that don't know Christ. Matthew 24, starting at verse number 4. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. It sounds familiar? A lot of stuff going on now. And you'll hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. You know, the funny thing about it is that if you pay attention to what's happening in America right now, there is this anything but Christianity mentality. There's an anything but Christianity mentality in this country. I mean, all the people that could say that they're Buddhists, they're Hindus, they're all them kind of stuff, and they can come with their gurus, their shamans, and whatever, and people celebrate them. They'll buy crystals and bow down to them and tell you they're hearing voices through the crystals and all these kind of things. And nobody thinks they're crazy. But let you and I open our mouths and speak about our love for Jesus, and we're nuts. Anything but Christianity. That's the time we're living in. Verse 10, and then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. If, there's, if this verse isn't being fulfilled today, I don't know what else is. And because lawlessness will abound, okay, the love of many will grow cold. We're seeing it. But he who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom, verse 14, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So people want to see the end come? Guess what has to happen first? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness. Who else is going to do it but you and I and those who are children of the Most High God? This gospel of the kingdom must be preached. Amen? And these things that we just read, they're happening right before our eyes. Glory to God. Now go to Mark 16, please. Mark 16. I have some good notes that I haven't taught, taught in a while. <laughs> And starting at verse 15. And he said to them, Jesus speaking, go into all the world and what? Preach the gospel to who? Every creature. That's every person. Every ethnic group. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Glory to God. But Jesus didn't say these signs will follow the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists, the genuine prophets and apostles. He didn't say these signs will follow just them. He said these signs will follow those who what? Believe. Who what? Believe. It didn't say we'd follow of just a few people. He said those who believe. So as many as will believe, these signs will follow them. Amen? Those who what? Believe. So let's just take this issue of winning people to Christ. That means if you believe that God will use you to win people to Christ, people will be saved. People will be saved. 
he will be saved. If you stop shying away from praying for the sick, they'll be healed. Glory to God. They'll be healed. So in truth then, these scriptures that we've read, they're saying to you and I that we must take our place in making sure that the gospel is preached to everyone. To everyone. To everyone. Listen to this. Someone said this. If all the sleeping saints would wake up, all the lukewarm saints would fire up, all the dishonest saints would fess up, that's confess, all the disgruntled saints would sweeten up, all the discouraged saints would cheer up, all the depressed saints would look up, all the estranged saints would make up. All the gossipy saints would shut up. All the dry bones, you know, saints would shape up. All the true saints would stand up. Then we would have revival. I remember hearing Kenneth Hagin make the statement years ago that one of the problems with the church is that we are fishing out of a fish tank. Amen? Now, if there are churches all around us with people that are born again, and if a bunch of them jump out of their church and decide to become part of Christ Alive Christian Center, someone says, oh man, the church has grown. In one sense it has, but in another sense it has not. Because the body of Christ has not grown. Amen? The body of Christ grows when people are born again. Now, we can't stop people from coming here just like we can't stop people from leaving here. All right? But on the whole, we can do our part to be witnesses. Amen? So someone has said the trouble is that the church is in competition with itself. See, so that's why I am not big in this cyber church talk. Okay? Because basically, what, what you're basically saying is that you folks don't have to come to, my, come to where my city is. You know, just stay home and watch me. So basically, you know, you can gather tons of Christians to just stay home and watch you. And they talk about your cyber congregation. But you're not pastoring those people. You're just receiving offerings from them. And I'm not saying they're not learning anything from you. I'd be wrong to say that. But at the end of the day, when they need pastoral help, where do they turn? Do they jump on the plane and fly to you? Or do you jump on the plane and fly to them? Sunday evening, there was a situation, from, you know, and I left home to go and address it, to go and help out. Situation with, you know, with, with, with you know, some, you know, members. Amen? You know, so if your pastor is across the country, who comes when you need help? So, you know, so my, my thing about it is that someone, you know, um, says they get born again and then watching us online, my, my first priority is to help them find a local path, church with a lo good pastor to go to. Come on, somebody. Amen? But we'll talk about that another time. But churches are competing with each other. Mrs. Lynette Hagen made the statement, if we would stop trying to compete but complete the Great Commission, then we'd have more work than we could possibly do. If we would stop trying to compete, but complete the Great Commission, then we'd have more work than we could possibly do. So we're not supposed to be competing with each other. We should be reaching the world. We should be reaching the world. Many times we talk about in the church world that we want revival. Do we really? Because the thing about it is that 
there are some things, some terms that we use that I wish we would stop using them. I read stuff. I will actually stop and read flyers that people post up. And I'll see things like a one-night revival. What's a one-night revival? A one-night revival. One-week revival. True revival doesn't get put on a calendar. It is a product of prayer and commitment to hearing from God and obeying the instructions of God that result in transformation taking place. No one starts it except through prayer with obedience. And no one ends it except through they, it just fades out because they've lost their passion. But true revival is something birthed out of the hearts of men in conjunction with the will of God that results in action that leads to redemption of many. It's not designed to cause people, because in the context that we use revival, it's not designed to cause Christians to get happier. No, not that you're not going to get refreshed. I mean, I don't know about you, but if I'm in a move of God that a lot of people are going to get are getting saved, I'm going to be filled with a whole lot of fire and excitement. I'm going to get blessed. Amen? But part of the reason I'm celebrating is because the angels and I are having a party. That people are getting born again. Amen? I know what people mean because I understand the church meaning of the term. But in the, in the true context, amen? It's really not revival. Now, if we're dead and God has to come revive us, maybe that's the revival. But in truth, what we're talking about here when we talk about true revival is reaching the lost. Now, let me, let me stir the pot a little bit more. So each person has to take responsibility then to stir themselves up. Or if you want to say to revive yourself, you want to use that term with a fresh passion for God and to do the work of the Great Commission. Every member, every person. Not some, all. I was listening to, um, again, um, an, 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 a message that Brother Hagin preached in 2003. And in this message, I've heard him talk about this before. He made reference to when he was pastoring in the early days of his ministry. And he said this, he said, they had more people out on Sunday nights than Sunday morning. And he said, Sunday morning was mostly a believer's service, meaning it wasn't focused on soul winning because it was mostly Christian, put it most by Christian. People didn't get saved, it was mostly Christians in the building. So it was more of a believer's service, focused on edifying, teaching the believer and so forth. But he said, Sunday night, they would pack the building out and people would be standing outside. And that was their evangelistic service. Okay? And in other words, the church members worked very hard at getting people out Sunday night who needed Jesus. Sinners would come. Because in that service as well, they had moves of the Spirit, people getting healed. And all those things. Okay? Now, if we can't even get Christians out to Sunday evening service, how are those Christians going to get sinners out? Okay? Think about this, for example, historically. You check with most churches when they say, we're having a, you know, um, you know we're having a friend day and so forth, our family. And the whole goal, many times, is to get unsaved people into the building that day. And yet a lot of the people that members bring are already saved and have already have a church home. Okay? Which defeats the purpose. Again, no one goes fishing in a fish tank. Okay? Because those fish have already been caught. You go fishing in the wild. So, we have to take responsibility. 
And one reason why we don't see plans for personal witnessing is because we are so concerned about asking God only our, which much for the things concerning our own needs that we're never focused on asking God what he needs and what he wants us to do. Now I'm going to tell you something. One thing I know about God, he has common sense. He sends us to reach people that we can also disciple. So for the most part, if God is going to send me to go preach someplace, to sinners someplace, then there has to be a church that I can connect them to if they can't come here where I am. And if I can't connect them, then, then basically I've missed it. Now people say, what do you mean you've missed it? I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. Okay? All, let me use the mothers. All your mothers, raise your hand. Your mother, raise your hand. Take down. Now, let me ask you this question. Okay. You're pregnant for nine months. You go through all the discomforts and all of the things that go with that. All right? And then you're delivered. Okay, you have your baby. And so I hear that you have your baby. So I'm coming over to come visit. And I get to your house. And I'm like, where's the baby? He said to me, well, I figured... It's born. It's human. It'll take care of itself. So here I am. Would you do that? And if I, if I came to your house and you told me that, man, Lord have mercy, I wouldn't even have time to pray. I'd be rushing to find the baby, to try and save the baby. Am I correct? And we really wonder about your mental state. Amen? And we have to be praying about your legal situation. I'm just simply saying, in the natural, we don't do that. So why do we think God would do that? Why would, why, we have a responsibility having, you know, mother and father now, we have the responsibility having brought a child into the world to nurture and care for that child until it gets to the place where it can care for itself. Come on. So there's no selfishness when we talk about winning people and bringing them here into Christ alive. Or of the people at, uh, you know, over at you know, Bronxwood Church, winning people and bringing them to Bronxwood. Agape love, winning people and bringing them to agape love. This is where I'm coming from. It's not a matter of selfishness. It's responsibility. Now, what does a caring mother do, caring parent do, who has a child but not in the position to, to, um, to look after that child? We, you know, we condemn individuals who would just throw the child out, abandon the child, leave the child to die. Am I correct? Okay? But we will understand them giving the child up. We're just using this natural analogy now for adoption. Okay? What, what for example... I read a case, I was sharing with my wife a case of a, of a young man that was given up for adoption by his birth, birth parents. His, his, his mother actually chose the family. But, but she was, they were too young at the time. Parents were too young at the time to look after. He knew he was adopted, but the birth parents never spoke about, I mean, the adoptive parents never spoke about the birth parents. Found out later on, the adoptive parents were like third cousins of the, of the um, biological parents. Okay? So, one day, he's home, grown, but he's at his parents' house, and his mother notices that he's chatting with this, her hidden name on, on, um, on, on, online. And, and she says, let me see that. And says, you know, because, says, that's the same name as your birth father. Because he's mature enough now, right? And so, she said, you know, so... He pulls up the picture of the individual who is, you know, and, and um, that he's been talking to with the same name. And, and the mother said, that's your birth father, their co-worker. What are the odds? 
And they had a wonderful relationship as friends, not knowing that they were biologically father and son. Okay? But the thing about it is that he had no regrets. You know, he's glad to meet the birth father. Not no regrets about his life because the parents who raised them loved them. And cared. You see where I'm coming from? So the point of the matter is that if I'm not going to personally take care of a newborn saint, because remember when a person just gets born again, what does the Bible call them? As newborn babes. Then I have a responsibility to make sure that they're being cared for. Oh, come on now. Amen? So we have to plan. Let me, let me wrap up for tonight. So that means then we have to take time to renew in ourselves a fresh passion for what God is passionate about. Okay? And God is passionate about reaching the lost. He's passionate about seeking to heal the sick, set, let the oppressed go free, and so forth and so on. God is passionate about these things. So we have to be passionate about that. And if we are, then we are going to plan to be a witness. Because God used our hands, our feet, our mouths. Not feet, feet. Our mouths. Amen? He uses us to fulfill his purpose. Not our own. His purpose. We have to plan. So, no matter what your life is like, no matter how busy you may say you are, God is expecting you and I to make time in our so-called busy lives to fulfill, doing our part in fulfilling the Great Commission. What if you planned, for example, you know, I'm going to believe God to speak to two people each week. Now, Lord, show me them. You're walking prepared. You're ready. Amen? So even if it's your subway ride, even if it's your walk in the park, even if it's your fellowship time with new friends that you meet, whatever it may be, you're, you, you, you plan to do this and you ask God to help you get it done. Amen? Amen? We need to become busy for God when it comes to being witnesses. The world around us is sick. And what I love about what Jesus said, he said, I didn't come for those who are well. I came for those who are sick. And he's referring to those who are apart from God. Amen? So there are a whole lot of so-called righteous people in this world that don't have any interest in anything you have to say because as far as they're concerned, they're settled. And Jesus literally said, I didn't come for y'all then. Since y'all left, fine. You're criticizing me because I'm hanging out with the sinners. But those that are well don't need a physician. So since that you are well, you don't need me. Principal of a school I was speaking to said he's been asked because of the achievement of the school that, that he is in and how he's helping these underprivileged kids do well. He's been asked and had the opportunity to go to, quote, unquote, better school. And he's been asked, why? Why, why do you stay here? Why don't you want to go elsewhere? He said, because those kids don't need me. He said, a lot of them, they're in established school, everything it needs. Okay? All right? And, and you know, some of them, their parents, you know, you know, they don't, they, you know they're not even coming to school with no uniforms, hoping that somebody would have mercy and buy them even one. You know, sometimes you think your life is hard till you find a child who has to go to school today, come home in the evening, wash the uniform, hopefully it dries by morning, iron it to put it back on to go back to school again. Okay? And he said, my goal is to be like Jesus. And they asked him, what do you mean? He said, let me explain. Jesus came and took the downtrodden that were nothing and turned them into somebody. So let me go help the kids who everybody said is nothing and turn them into somebody. Amen? That may mean you lose out on being in the place of prestige. You may lose out 
you know, on, on some of the honors that, that go out and given out. But in the end, your satisfaction is seeing the downtrod. Amen? So sometimes you may lose out on an event or two. But at the end of the day, you have a plan to help touch people's lives. Amen? People need to know the one who desires for them to have everlasting life. Put faith in his son, Jesus Christ. And we have a responsibility to plan. Say plan. Plan to be a witness. Amen? We have a responsibility to plan to be a witness. I'll say this to you and I'll close tonight. There may not be many of us in the room at the moment. There may not be a whole lot of people online. But those who hear it can do something with it. Amen? Those who hear it can do something with it. So I pray that those of us who have heard this tonight will do something with it. I'll continue next, next week because I still have more notes. Made. Amen? Father, I thank you for the privilege of sharing this thought tonight. And I thank you that it was received. And I thank that it will be mixed with faith and action, producing results for your glory, resulting in many coming to salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord told us earlier in the year that Christ Alive Christian Center shall be called the house of success. When people hear the word success, they think solely of monetary success. Amen? But praise God for the success of soul winning. We start where we are. We keep pressing and pressing. Because if we do not give up, we will reap. Because the scripture said, you will reap <clears throat> if you do not faint. Let's stand. Father, we just thank you. We just praise your name. We give you all the glory. Amen. Make a fresh commitment to be a witness for Jesus. Right as you're standing right where you are, make a fresh commitment to be a witness for Jesus. You don't, you don't, you don't have to pray long to pray effectively. Just make a fresh commitment to be a witness for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, precious Father. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen, amen. You may be seated. A thought just came to mind. I'll say it real quickly. Not everybody is equipped in the same way. We all have giftings and abilities. So sometimes you're good at winning them, but you have to hand them off to somebody to disciple them. Amen? Don't, don't be troubled about that. Amen? Because, again, we're one family. That's the bottom line. I often laugh when I remember my little cousin was giving my aunt a whole lot of trouble. And my, um, my mom said, Bring him to me and let him stay with me a few days. I'll deal with it. And when my aunt brought him, he was bawling like a crazy kid. Bawling, bawling. He was just a little tight. And I don't know what he was exposed to, but when he, um, when they left him, and my mother planted him on a chair and he's kicking and screaming. And he finally realized he couldn't get off that chair, but his mouth was still running. He started releasing some Jamaican bad words, curse words. He wants his, you know what, mama, and he's going through all that stuff. And my mom didn't do a thing, just left him there. And the funny thing about it, I guess, it dawned on him eventually that that behavior is not getting him out of the chair. Amen. He stayed with us a little bit. Never came back. I'm not talking about physically. Never came back to stay like that. Because after my mom was done with him, amen, the thought of having to go through that breaking again stayed with him. Never had to be broken again, so to speak. Amen? What I'm saying is, at the end of the day, some people just know how. 
to do certain things that you and I may not be able to do. So if you have to pass them off to somebody, pass them off and let them get discipled. Don't be like the, the person in this church that years ago told her pastor, everybody that I want to teach, they belong to me. I said, what is this? Amen? God is good. Praise God. Are you ready to give? We're going to receive our evening's offering. If you need an envelope, the ushers will give you one. Of course, if you're using the app, then just go ahead and um, um, use it. And let me point out that um, those of you that are online, I'm sure they, will, they have the information on the screen concerning, concerning how you can, you're giving, how you can text and so forth. As always, you can mail your offerings into Christ Alive, you know, at, um, you know, P.O. Box 472, Bronx, New York, 10470. And you can also, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? You can also have your bank send it on to us. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The, the fastest way through the app, it's quick, and we give God praise. Hallelujah. Isn't Jesus wonderful? All right. Lift up whatever you're using to give. Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name for the privilege of giving. We celebrate your faithfulness. Thank you again for blessing your people and fulfilling your purpose in their lives because you are a God of covenant and all that you have covenant with us concerning giving and receiving, we declare fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. This coming Sunday is our special anointing service. So be here, and if you need, if you want to bring a bottle of olive oil, because we're gonna you know consecrate it as I said on Sunday, it's gonna come in just regular olive oil and leave holy anointing oil. Amen. It's not some magic potion, all right, or anything like that. Glory to God. You'll be amazed how God works. You know, um, preacher was preaching. Someone was watching from um, South Korea couldn't be in the service, and he was talking about the healing component of the communion. And the person said they had no, um, they had no communion wafer, and they had no, you know, grape juice. But what they had was a piece of bread and some soda. So they grabbed their piece of bread, and it wasn't even un un unleavened bread. <laughs> they grabbed a piece of bread and some soda, and, and prayed over it like just like they were doing in the church service, you know, and declaring healing on himself, partook of it, and was instantly healed. Amen? I mean, you know, what God can do, glory to God. Amen? So we just magnify the Lord and thank God. So this Sunday is going to be glorious. And then Sunday evening, if you're free, 4.30, I'll be ministering at Agape Love, and I'm looking forward to, um, to that at 1023 um, Allerton Avenue where um, Bishop um, um, Alfonso and Pastor Vita Grampus, they're leaders of the church there. So I'm looking forward to being with them. Praise God. So any of you can make it, then we're looking forward to having you. Is there any, honey, is there anything I should mention that you can think of? Women's Fellowship is this Saturday. So um, please, if you have not yet um, registered, if you're coming, you know, and you're watching online, call the church office tomorrow. Amen. Let them know. And so it, it, it helps in the preparation um, to, to make sure that you have a glorious time. Amen? Pastor Barrington, anything else I, anything I should mention? That's it? That's good? Youth, yeah, the youth um, late night um, hangout is on the 18th. That's next Friday, beginning at 7 until midnight. Amen? And we're encouraging all the parents to have their youth come out. It's going to be a great time. And by the way, all right, parents, don't let your feelings about not wanting to be here at midnight picking up your child. Stop you from letting your child be here. Okay? Praise the Lord. All right. Let's stand. It's good to have been here. Amen. God bless all of you that joined us online. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lifts up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell, and I shall dwell, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And remember, without expectation, there can be no manifestation because our expectation is our faith in action. You are dismissed. Praise God.